Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about something we don't talk a lot about much anymore because there's not really much to talk about, and that is the mainstream comic book industry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when we first started this channel, we talked a hell of a lot more about mainstream comics and the industry and our experience in it and uh, working in it and uh, the people in it and the convention scene and all that jazz. And, um, you know, definitely things have changed uh, since then. In the four or five years we've been doing this, the pandemic certainly helped change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest changes is to uh, Diamond. Diamond was, for the longest time, a monopoly in distribution to comic shops. And uh, as soon as the pandemic started, freaking Steve Jeppy basically curled up under the desk in the fetal position and decided he was gonna he was gonna unilaterally just shut the comic book industry yeah, down. Yeah, I remember that, yes. And uh, the backlash, and that was pretty fierce. I know there were some people that were afraid to uh, challenge him because you know he had a lot of their money because he was a distributor. But uh, you know, DC Comics wound up finding other distribution. Uh, other publishers, IDW and some other ones, started moving away from from uh, Diamond, and now Dark Horse is moving away from Diamond as well. And uh, this is this is pretty interesting because Jeppy seems to be in a, a state of denial. We're going to read his yeah. reaction to this. But things are changing. The direct market is is definitely uh, changing. And I think it's so weird. Everybody's like, you know, comics are fine. Comics are fine. But then you go out to social media and you're like, you know, all of these independent publishers are folding. They're not paying their people. Are people still saying it's fine? Yeah, I think they're trying to talk themselves. In. Well, what they're doing is they're basically like, oh, manga's fine. Graphic novels and, you know, that are being sold in Walmart are fine. So we're all fine. It's all, all fine, fine here, here, honest. Keep, I need to keep my job. Yeah, right. Um, and it's it's not working out very well. We don't know what's going on with DC Comics because of uh, Warner, Discovery, and I think we have a lot of people out of work. Speaking of comics and speaking of making money in comics, thank you so much uh, for those of you who who uh, contributed to the yes, Crimson Ren you. campaign. It's still in, in demand. We only have a couple of tiers up, though. Uh, you can get the book bundle, the single book, or uh, retailer tiers. But um, yeah, you know, it just diamond really isn't necessary anymore no. uh, for a lot of people. And which we've been saying. Which we've been saying. And, and back in the day, when I first like met you and, you know, we, I learned about comics from you, I, had, I kept saying it's kind of dumb that everybody has to go through diamond. I'm like, why? And you're like, because they do. And I'm like, why? Because that's how it's done. And I was like, why? Because that's <laughs> dumb. And it's dumb that you have to, everybody has to, it's like, it's almost like the mafia. And yeah, I was like, is, you have is. to pay your protection money to make sure your books get into stores. And I kept asking you about it. Because I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I mean, it's like, what if it goes down? Well, it doesn't. But what if it does? And Diamond it, just works. And then it did. And I was like, there it is. Told you. People have been, years ago. People have been saying this for years. And it's so weird because I know that there are some uh, journalists working for you know outlets like Bleeding Cool. I think it was Jude Terror actually put an article out there like 10 years ago that uh, you know the comic book industry can't have a single critical point of failure. Exactly. And everybody, you know, blasted him. And then then the bad guy became uh, Comicsgate and the YouTubers and all of that that were dunking on the comic book industry. But look, it's it's not a long term sustainable business model. A lot of people now they're getting their I'm surprised it lasts as long as it yeah, did. I know, right? Uh, they're getting their comics from Amazon. They're getting their comics from Walmart. So let's talk about it. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Two hundred and seventy six thousand subs. Uh, thank you for the support. We do talk about comics, having worked in and around the industry for a number of years and uh, going back to publishing our own stuff. And uh, I don't think we're going to be using Diamond. No. Like, like ever. Like, well, I don't even... It was ridiculous even... before because we looked into it. And it was like you had to have so many thing projects per year and sell so many things for them to make sure that you get to stay in Diamond. There was like a lot of hoops you had to jump through. And I was like... This is dumb. Yeah, we actually had a friend that that worked at Diamond, and uh, she was trying to get us in. And she said, yeah, you know, we'd be happy if you guys got in. She's like, you know, for a graphic novel, you know, we'd be thrilled if you pre-sold 300 copies. And just, just going out to crowdfunding, we've done more than 300 copies. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually get to you know, keep more of the money too, because Diamond takes a huge cut. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it is a very dangerous proposition to have them you be. Had to, but you had to like, do like so many books a year though. It wasn't yeah, like you could just yeah. do one. You had to have so much a year. 
And they basically got to a point, now this is what was so weird about it, they got to a point where they made it very clear they didn't want to work with smaller publishers. So they made it as hard as possible for these publishers to work with them until they basically just like gave up. And then now they're starting to lose their big publishers. You know, so now mm-hmm. they're probably going to go back and try to kiss butt and get all these indie publishers back. But uh, Dark Horse is one of the top five comic book publishers. They got sold to Embracer Group. And I remember Mike Rich- Richardson, the uh, publisher of Dark Horse, he was in that one uh whatever it was, a round table they had on that one YouTube channel. And uh, Jeppy was there and Richardson just looked like he wanted to throttle the guy, but he Mm -hmm. wasn't saying anything because I think he knew like this guy owes me like millions of dollars. I cannot afford to piss him off. Speaking of Jeppy owing people money, it was funny because back when when Neon worked on um, certain Disney comics uh, that were the gemstone ones that were run by uh, Jeppy, um, he wasn't getting paid after a while, and a lot of people weren't getting paid. And that was the time Jeffy decided to build the museum to honor himself. I mean, comics by using all that money to, for himself. Um, and it was funny because the only reason Neon got paid was because Neon went to the media. <laughs> um. Yeah. So <laughs> secrets the, out. It was him. Yeah. But yeah. It's been like fifteen years. Yeah. No. I. I did. I did let it leak that they weren't paying people because it wasn't just me. I was comparing notes with other people working on the Disney books. And nobody had gotten paid in like six months. You know, we're not talking like, I think hey. some people said might not have gotten paid at all. I, I think some people didn't get paid at all. And uh, one of those people, I, I think it was actually Maria Javins, who, or Javins, who works for uh, DC now. But um, she was working with me at that time. I remember she was doing some coloring and stuff mm-hmm. on the, the Disney books. And yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people weren't getting paid. And I'm like, fine, I might as well say it. I got a day job. And they're like, who told? I don't know. No, 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 no. Who, I don't know. I don't know. That is that um, idea. I did get paid, though. Yeah, they figured it was you, though. <laughs> yeah, so. well, because I got a phone call. And then after that, they basically just cut everybody loose. But yeah, I'll tell you what happened. What happened was, and this is kind of like IDW, like when you hear about these companies having financial problems or whatever, it's not shocking because you look at the history and IDW, they were having a hard time paying people in like 2014. This is before all the Hollywood crap and all that. So to hear that they're having financial problems is not a shocker. And the same with Jeppy. Jeppy overspent on his museum. He built this museum and the funds for the museum came from Gemstone Publishing, as I understand it. And that's why freelancers didn't get paid. But it wasn't just like, hey, we're a couple of weeks late or hey, we're a month late. It was like, yeah, we're not going to pay anybody for like six months. Was that long? I don't remember. It was a long, long time. It was a while, but I don't, know if long. I don't remember how long it was. It was a long time ago. So part of me is like, let me get out the world's uh, tiniest violin here. Um, you know. But anyway, Penguin Random House is going to distribute single issue Dark Horse titles starting in 2023. Um, this is coming from Games Radar, which was Newsarama, which is no longer a thing. Uh, the direct market landscape continues to shift. That's what we're calling it. As yet another publisher makes the switch from Diamond to Penguin Random House. Um, they have done you know, graphic novels and manga since 2013, and now they're going to distribute the single-issue comics, graphic novels, and manga to the direct market. Under this new multi-year agreement, retailers can order new and backlist single-issue Dark Horse titles directly from Penguin or order them wholesale through Diamond Comics. So what's going on is... You can either do it directly, and this is like the other distributors too. Like, yeah, you can order the stuff through Diamond, but it's a better deal to just order from them directly. But mm-hmm. Diamond's not controlling it anymore. Right, which they're not happy about. No, they're not. Um, so this is this is the thing, and it was kind of the same with DC too. It was like, and I think IDW worked that way too. Like, yeah, you can go through Diamond, but um, you can also bypass them completely. Mm-hmm. And the reason they're doing that is because Steve Jeppy, again, curled up in the fetal position and crawled under the desk. shafted everyone. Stuck it to everybody, and he basically expected the comic book industry to stop, uh, you know, because he said so. Like, yep, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's just close everything down. Close it down, guys. And uh, it was a really stupid thing. Meanwhile, uh, crowdfunding blew up. Manga sales blew up. I've got friends that uh, work in manga publishing and they said they could not keep up with the demand. So mm-hmm. people were clearly buying comics. He just didn't didn't want to deal with it, you know, for months. I said it's an exciting time for the industry and our move to Penguin Random House for direct market distribution comes after our successful partnership in bookstore distribution, uh, says Mike Richardson, who was in that that round table and looked like he wanted to throttle Jeppy for holding his money. So here is here is Jeppy's uh, reaction to it. 
And this is coming from comics. This is a very Jeppy reaction. This is a very Jeppy reaction. Um, said that, yeah, joining IDW and Marvel at uh, Penguin Random House, which they both yanked. And then, of course, you know, we have DC with Lunar and whoever else they signed with. Um, it says, as soon as the story broke, Diamond Comics president Steve Jeppy released his own statement, pointing out that Diamond would continue to be the distributor for Dark Horse's very extensive merchandise line and then throwing in a little shade about how they were only losing 1% of their volume. I, I, I say bullshit. I think that's bullshit too. I, but yeah, this is some bullshit. This is very petty bullshit. That is the comic book industry. Dark Horse has been our valued partner for close to 30 years. We're pleased that Diamond remains a key source for Dark Horse comics and graphic novels to the direct market. We're also pleased to maintain our role as distributor of Dark Horse merchandise worldwide. It's important to note that while Dark Horse is an established name, and I, I got to do it in the mean, the mean voice. Okay. It's important to note that while Dark Horse is an established name in the industry, the expected impact of this change to Diamond's Dark Horse direct market sales represents only 1% of Diamond's top sales, inclusive of comics, games, merchandise, and pop culture items. We're so much more than a comic book distributor. Diamond and all the Jeppy family enterprises companies oh have, have worked strategically and successfully to diversify over the years. And our most recent example being the launch of Overstreet Access. What the hell is that? Uh, the Overstreet Price Guide, a comic related Does anybody thing. care? Not really. I remain proud of the role Diamond plays in the industry and steadfast in my commitment to the direct market. Okay, Until so. Until something bad happens and then I like, like, I'll, like I just let it all fall apart. So, okay, you know, in Pirates of the Caribbean, the scene where the ship is blowing up and the dude's walking down the stairs yeah. and he's going down with the ship. And, but he's, you know, that that's Jeppy. Like diamond is imploding. Like everybody is taking their ball and going home. Now, again, you can't That's right. Jeff, you're not allowed to play with their balls anymore. You, Jeppy can't fondle their balls anymore. Uh, and they're doing it because they have to do it. I mean, that's the thing. That's the danger of having one distribution pipeline is, you know, they close shop. Everybody's effed, but things are fine. I always, are, I always thought it was things stupid. Things are fine. I was like, that's the, so dumb because what happens if Diamond goes under or something? I don't know. I was like, well, that's dumb. Uh, they said in the letter to retailers, Jeppy is encouraged, encouraging them to attend this October's Diamond Retailers Summit. Good luck with that. Losing Marvel, DC, and now two more of the top five comics periodical publishers, Diamond has been retrenching for a while. Uh... Yeah, they said pretty soon, according to Comicron, Penguin is going to be the biggest distributor to the direct market. Because at this point, you can just go to Penguin. If they've got the top five comic book publishers and you don't really care so much about the indie stuff, you know, the really indie stuff, you're just like, I just want my Marvel, my DC, my Dark Horse, my whatever. You can just order from Penguin. Well, they're even like with Diamond buying as a wholesaler, but Diamond's buying Penguin from Penguin. They aren't, they aren't just like, you know. They don't need Diamond. Like no. Penguin could just take the whole damn thing over and call it a day. And I think that's what's no going to happen. No diamond. It's CZ. <laughs> so, but things are fine, guys. Things are okay. And diamond, I mean, God, they were laying people off before the pandemic. You know, it's just like, I mean, this is just another major upheaval. The sales are in the gutter. The dist distribution's changing. We don't know what the hell Warner's going to do with DC. But again, Things are fine. Things are it's rosy. It's all fine here. It's all fine. There's nothing to see. It's all good. Comics are fine, guys. It'll be, it'll be fine. Everything's good. Let's go tweet some more. That's right. All right, we gotta wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.